All right, everyone, hello and welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to go over upper traps specifically uh, and some of the claims surrounding upper traps that are currently sort of floating around the fitness space, mainly that the upper traps are not really trained during shrug type motion. So we're gonna address the claims, like what they're saying, why they're saying it, what the argument is, and then we're gonna talk about the validity of the claims and then just go over some mechanical modeling here on Skeleton Steve, who now has a mustache and a goatee, okay? So the claim basically for, again, the, the, the whole, you know, shrugs don't train upper traps thing, I think is rooted in uh, what has now been discussed as like uh, a more like translatory type force that the upper traps create, right? So the upper traps are gonna attach all along the sort of base of the skull and then down on the cervical spine, if I can illustrate my fiber direction here. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna loop underneath of the clavicle, right? So the claim is basically that because they loop underneath of the clavicle and they actually run laterally, right? So basically, they run under the clavicle and then also basically they trickle out to the side of the tip of the shoulder blade here on what's called the acromion, right? So they basically span from here and they run in and sort of underneath of the clavicle this way. And the claim is basically that like, okay, if there's a force that's pulling the arm down this way, this wouldn't really do much to actually resist that, number one, because it doesn't attach to the arm or the scapula directly, which is number one is incorrect because there is a division that attaches directly to the shoulder blade. But number two, also because the fiber direction is more backward that way. And so instead of trying to do a shrug type motion to train the traps, what we should do is we should actually hinge over and do more retraction based stuff because that direction of pull is backward that way. So I understand from a surface level perspective sort of how this um, claim comes to be in the first place in terms of like how people start to believe it. Um, but we're going to talk about now why it's wrong. So first things first is um, something that is sort of said in addition to all this other stuff is basically like, again, if it doesn't attach to the arm, it doesn't like resist the pull downward. Well, that would also imply that like if there were ever a load anywhere in my hand, that none of the muscles on the upper arm because they don't cross any joints in the hand or the wrist wouldn't be acting. And we all just inherently know that's that's pretty stupid, right? So from the perspective of when the shoulder girdle is loaded with any sort of shoulder blade motion, i.e. elevation, which I'll do it with this side because I don't want that side to fall off. Elevation, for those of you who don't know, is basically motion of the shoulder blade upward, like a shrug. Elevation is also sort of paired with a little bit of like inward motion. Right, so if I turn this guy around, elevation is sort of up in this way, right? Because all the guys that elevate, they're not just running randomly up and out here, they're running sort of toward uh, the back of the neck and, and the cervical spine. Right, so if, for those of you who don't know, there's a muscle called the levator, right, which attaches to the top of the shoulder blade and runs up uh, and sort of directs toward the skull. In addition to the upper traps, both of these are actually going to create an elevation type motion because when the scapula elevates and because the clavicle, okay, is directly connected to the scapula via tons of different connective tissues, when these things move upward, or, or when the scapula moves upward rather, the clavicle has to move with it, right? It, it doesn't have to move out of the way, right? It's actually directly sort of um, in a, in a one-to-one -one involved in this elevation type motion. So when we do a shrug and you can literally just take your finger, put on your clavicle and do a shrug, you'll feel that clavicle sort of tipping upward. So what is gonna do a great job of tipping that clavicle upward you guessed it, the muscle that literally attaches directly to the clavicle and pulls up this way, okay? So to say that the upper traps don't get trained with shrugs is completely erroneous, but to say that they're trained optimally with shrugs may be a little bit of a stretch, so we're gonna talk about that in a second. But just one more thing, because I, I didn't go over it before, Something that we have to keep in mind with muscles is that they don't act in isolation, right? So although this may be like a clavicle type motion where we're doing a shrug, we have to remember that there are other muscles that attach to the clavicle and the shoulder blade that also uh, contribute to either stabilizing that motion or also performing that same motion. So I mentioned the levator scap. The levator scapula is basically a muscle that runs up and sort of this way, right? So it's a muscle that starts from here and runs forward a little bit and the upper trap not so coincidentally, attaches from forward and runs backward, right? So if you picture a line of pole, and I'm, this is not gonna be perfect, but that runs more this way, picture an arrow, boop, going this way, up and back, and an arrow going this way, up and forward. Both of those arrows form what's called a resultant, which basically means that they create a force because they cross like this, that goes directly upward, okay? So if that wasn't enough to convince you, I don't know what will be that the upper traps are trained well with shrugs, 
but what might be a more optimal solution in terms of stimulating the upper trap a little bit more directly, not necessarily as a proportion to the other traps, because that's not really what we're talking about, but just more directly in terms of its fiber orientation from here to here as we discussed, and then also from here to here, right? So basically any elevation type motion that we know is gonna be necessary, but any motion really that you allow for just a little bit of retraction in addition, right? So not a straight vertical shrug, because again, there's a little bit of a, of a pull backward behind the body, maybe just a shrug that's a little bit like we hinge over um, and we move up and slightly backward. So a lot of you will actually feel that immediately, again, because of that fiber direction, that line of pull, again, down to the clavicle and to the edge of the scapula here, that because it will sort of pull the clavicle up and backward and in addition will pull that um, outside of the shoulder blade up just a little bit in, in, in tandem we want to choose a motion that is loaded just a little bit front to back as opposed to directly up to down that will be a little bit more specific to the upper trap so again just to recap claims hopefully that all made sense mechanistically biomechanically but if you want to actually go into the gym apply this stuff a little bit more specifically to the upper trap Training the length and position is super easy. If you could just like, just pretend like you're doing a normal shrug, but just hinge over a little bit, right? So your spine and your hips will be loaded just a little bit. But again, just, just hinge over just very, very little. And uh, again, that motion is slightly back, but it's mostly still up. So sort of shoulders up and behind the ears, but you want a load that's actually resisting that line of pull. If you want to train the most short position of the upper traps, you need to be doing something that's up and overhead, right? Um, like, you know, like a, grab two cables, do like a snow angel. Right, or a single cable if you don't have a dual cable stack and basically just do a motion that's gonna actually be training this full upward rotation where those upper traps can really, really contribute and get really short in addition to like something that's shruggy. So shrugs at an angle, great for upper traps. Rows at an angle, low to high in that same vector, great for upper traps. Um, and then the snow angel type, you know, overhead flies, if you will, uh, great for upper traps. So hopefully that was helpful from just a visual perspective. Sometimes these things can be kind of tough to see, but if you liked it, please give it a like, give it a share or something. I don't know uh, what people do now. Um, and uh, let me know if any of you have any questions in the comment section. I'll get to them as best I can.